<laughs> hey, Jilly and Gladwag, are you singing along? Betty was just singing, weren't you, Booey? Well, actually, she was barking at a dog outside. Hello and welcome, welcome to my next live tutorial, everybody. Um, <laughs> if I don't give Betty this, this treat soon, I think she's going to come up and get it, aren't you? She's actually, um, I just noticed she's got paint on her ear because we've been painting the new studio. Just got a little bit of white. <laughs> Poor Bowie, have you got paint on you? Have you? Have you got paint on you? Go on, off you go then. So, good morning, everyone. Oh, are you taking this tutorial? But you're going to have to get down because I need to get there now. Go on, off you go. Off you go. That's it. Um, welcome to my lampshade making tutorial. I must just say, this is the last tutorial we're going to be doing in my la in my studio here in Dorking which is a bit sad, but the next tutorial will be in my new studio, in our new premises. There will be a new backdrop. It's all going to be very exciting. Uh, it feels like we've got a small mountain to climb between now and then. <laughs> I think Christopher will agree with that. He's not listening. Um, but yes, I'm sure, aren't we? We're sure, Christopher, that by October the 11th, when our next tutorial is, that we will be more than ready yes, to show master. everyone. Yes, <laughs> and I'll tell you what we're doing at the next one at the end of this one. Right, so moving swiftly on today, I am going to show you how to make a double-sided lampshade. So most lampshades that we buy in the shops or indeed that have made in the past have been single-sided with just a design on the outside. But now things have really moved on and we've got an inside as well. So basically, we sell this kit in its component parts. It does not come with the fabric, however. So don't think you've got to make one that looks like this. You can use whichever fabrics you like. I'm just going to show you what comes in the kit. It comes with this very long, <laughs> this is to make a 30 centimetre diameter lampshade um, and it's 21 centimetres high. OK, so it comes with this very long double sided piece that's going to form the main body of the lampshade. That's the first thing. It comes with these epoxy coated um, lampshade rings. So this is the one with the fitting. So you can either make it into a table lamp where you put the bulb at the bottom and it sits up this way, or you can have it hanging down as a pendant and it, and it comes this way. And obviously you then also, so I've got all these bits ready to go. They're all sticky. Um, that's the bottom bit. So you get the two bits of the lampshade. You also, let me just put this up the right way. You also get a piece of edging strip and I'll show you what that's for. And it's just to help you cut the edges basically. Uh, so that's quite straightforward. And you also get, <clears throat> excuse me, your double-sided tape. I'll explain that in a minute as well. Oh, and you get a lovely, very exciting finishing tool. Very important um, little piece of plastic that comes with it as well. So yes, any fabrics. What I've gone for, both instances, so i.e. the one I've already made and also the one I'm going to show you today, is I've gone for um, a velvet on the outside and a cotton on the inside. And of course, I've used these wonderful Odile fabrics that we sell. Um, that come in all sorts of different colours, which I'm sure you've seen before already available on our website. So what I would say is you could use two cottons. So you could do a cotton on the outside and a cotton on the inside. Um, but I've gone for the velvet on the outside. What you can't do, though, however, is use two velvets because that will make it too thick and it will be difficult to finish it around 
the bottom, which I'll show you how to do a bit later on. Um, then you do end up with a seam down one side, and I've covered mine in ribbon. So that doesn't come with the kit either, but obviously the world's your oyster with that. I've just gone for a really narrow um, stitched ribbon on the inside and the outside just to cover the seam with a bit of glue. But the only other things you're really going to need are some really sharp scissors to cut your fabric. Your fabric needs to be slightly bigger than the strip. So it needs to be a few centimetres each side just to allow you to place it and stick it. This piece, I think, is 96 centimetres long, so you need about a metre long by about... So this is 21, so just add a few centimetres onto each side of the fabric. So once you've got your fabrics, you've got your scissors, there's not an awful else, uh, lot else that you need that doesn't come in the kit. All right. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's actually really straightforward. So once you've seen someone do it, you sort of think, oh, that's how you do it. So basically, we're just going to stick the fabrics to these two sides of this piece. And to save a little bit of time, because I know we're, we've got to be done in a certain amount of time because we're live, I've already stuck the inside cotton to it. Okay, So I've just chosen the turquoise cotton, and, and as you can probably see here, there's pussycats on it. And I've I just wanted to make the point that before you start, if your fabric has got a pattern on it that is directional, make sure you've got it the right way up. Very easy to end up with your lampshade upside down. Have you made an upside down lampshade? I haven't, but it would be very easy to do so. Because not only have I got this one with a, a directional pattern on it, i.e. the cats, but actually the velvet I'm going to use, which is this, has got birds on it. So it's got parrots and parakeets on it. So I've got to make sure that I've got both of them the right way around. The other thing I would advise and recommend before you start is to iron your fabrics. Make sure they don't have any creases in them because I think that will give you a better finish. You know, if you have them, sometimes they're folded up on the way to you when they arrive, they're folded, just um, iron them flat before you start. So yeah, and make sure that you've got these up the right way. So obviously I've done this one first. All that I did was I peeled off the sticky back backing I want to say sticky back plastic, but it's not. Well, the backing off the sticky bit, and then I, I stuck it down to this cotton first. But I'm going to do the other side live now on Telway, which could be slightly stressful. <laughs> um, I've got markings all over the table because I know that some of you on Instagram can only see the thin slice of what I'm doing. Um, if you're struggling to see what I'm doing on Instagram, do just flip over onto YouTube where I'm also live, and that will show you it widescreen. So, on the other side here then, this is also, if you want to go to the overhead now, darling, that's probably a good idea. That's the job. So um, as you can see, this is just the backing here that peels off, okay? And I'm now going to stick it down on here. One thing I did notice on this fabric that I'm using, the, the velvet one, is that my parakeets sort of go down to about here on this side. So I think what I might do is I might just move this panel down so that I've got most of the parakeets on. So I'm going to have more, I'm going to have less um, edging here than I will here. Okay, if that makes sense for Instagram. Let me just move it into the right place again. All right, so I'm just going to move this to here and I'm going to show you how I start to stick it down. Normally, I must say, I normally do this with it going that way on the table in front of me. So I have it long ways in front of me like landscape so I've turned it portrait in front of me in order to get it all on the camera so I'm um, sort of my head's I've, I keep feeling like I want to go like this but anyway we'll see how we get on all right so what I want to show you then is just peeling back the backing here the backing paper all right so I start off by doing that and I tend to just make a little fold in it like that okay and this is now going to determine where I'm sticking it so I'm pretty much going to go for, I'd say, there. All right, so I'm going to stick that down nice and firm, like that. And then I'm just going to reach underneath and I'm just going to grab that flap that I've just folded. Now, this is what I mean. I'm doing it sideways. I think we'll be okay, though. And I'm just pulling the, the paper, which you can see here. 
I'm just pulling it and then I'm just pressing it down as I go. And this velvet, let me slide it down there, is nice and, and um, thick and flat. So I'm fairly confident it's not rucking up. Well, I can see it isn't rucking up as I go. So that's good. I'm just going to keep pulling it down towards me until I get to the very end. Like so. Okay, simple as that. There we go. That wasn't too stressful, was it? Now then, the next thing that we're going to do is we need to make sure that we cut the same edging each side of this here and here. So in the kit, you very handily get a piece of this edging strip, okay? And then all you do with this, it's, it's, like, it's like another bit of the stuff you, if, that makes the lamp, lampshade, but it's uh, reusable and it's repositionable, okay? And all we do with this is we start to uh, um, stick it down. If you go back to that one, that's it. Let me get it in place. We stick it down right next to the edge, okay? Because this is gonna show us how much we need to cut off in order to get our sort of, uh, well, in order to get our piece of fabric that winds round. So let me show you what I mean here, look. So this bit, can you see? This bit here that goes around the edge of the lampshade, this is going to be this strip that I'm cutting here now. So I'm just going to, again, just feed it down as I go. But once, again, once you've got this going, it, it pretty much lines up and it should behave itself and um, pretty much stay in the right place. Okay, so there's that. Now, I do recommend that you get yourself, if you haven't already, some lovely sharp scissors, okay? Because all this is is a guide, okay? So we're now just going to cut this, which is very boring, but just watch me cut it. I'm gonna go as fast as I can. Um, keep it as neat as you can. I'm doing this super fast, so I probably wouldn't, <laughs> I'd probably take slightly more care if I wasn't doing it super fast. But you can see I'm just using this as a guide to the very end and cutting off that strip, okay? Now you're given one of these strips with this kit so that you just take it off, like so, and then you just pop it the other side and just position it in exactly the same way all the way down am i leaning is my head leaning into the shot i apologize if it is and keep it going all the way down to there and again it's just a guide i guess you could measure it if you didn't have one of these but they've they've been very thoughtful and provided that strip so then we just go down here in the same way and my scissors are so super sharp they're sort of just sailing through that. I love it when the scissors do that and you don't actually have to cut it. You can just push ahead and they just give you a lovely straight line like that. There, that was a little bit faster, wasn't it? Okay, any questions so far? Do we have some viewers? <laughs> we do have some viewers, Yay! but we don't particularly have any questions. No questions yet. No. That's no fine. Yet. Okay, let me get rid of the bits I don't need as I'm using them. Right, so I'm now going to take that side off there. And look, now we have, let's get rid of that as well. Now we have our lampshade panel all ready to go. So, if you come back to me, can you see? So that's going to be the outside of it. There are my birds, my parrots. Isn't it pretty? I love this black. It's so gorgeous. And then there's the inside there. Now, one thing I am going to do now, which I don't know, it's, it seems weird that you're not making a proper seam at the ends that overlap, but you do just need to cut them. You need to cut them right up tight to the ends. So I'll do this one first, like so. And then I'm just going to quickly flip it round and do that end as well okay so that's our panel ready to go got a slight sort of wobbly bit there but it doesn't really matter too much and i've got my parrot's heads at the top this side 
my cat's head at the top this side, so I know it needs to go this way up, okay, when I make it. All right, so now I'm going to move on to the next part of the process, which is covering the lampshade ring at the top and the lampshade ring at the bottom in double-sided tape. Can be a bit fiddly, but actually is relatively straightforward. What happens is, and I've just left a bit of the last one to do, so I've already done that one, and as you can see, I haven't peeled it off yet, but it's covered in this, if you go to the overhead a sec, Chris, it's covered in this red backing, okay, which I need to peel off in a second. And then this one here, as you can see, I've already gone round from there to here. So I'm just going to continue this last bit, and because I've got it up like this, is it still in focus? I'm not sure. Yeah, roughly. Roughly, okay. So can you see, it's just, it's, it's actually relatively straightforward if you keep your wits about you and just press it down as you go. And then when you get to meet the beginning piece, I'm just gonna snip that piece off like that. And then I've been very sensible and I've actually made sure that my end here is ready to peel off. But before I peel it off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it around, all the way around. I'll just do that nice and quickly. On this one, I've already done the other one at the top, but just to show you how to do it, just in case you're thinking, what's she talking about? Press it all the way round. Okay, so just, Obviously, when you peel the backing off, you want it to be sticky all the way around the whole ring, okay? So do that first, make sure it's really, really, really attached. And actually, doing that's really gonna help you peel the backing off as well, okay? I must apologize, actually, if anyone's looking at my fingernails on my hands today, they are covered in red paint, because I've been painting the new studio, Ugh. and there's painting the, painting the walls. I was painting the walls and um, yeah, it just goes everywhere basically, doesn't it? I wasn't wearing gloves. It's not It uh, does when you paint. It goes everywhere when I paint. I make a massive mess. Um, and it, I was painting a pink wall with red diamonds on it. So I've basically got red emulsion. I literally got it all over my hands. Actually, they're looking pretty good, all things considered, I think. Right, anyway, back to this. So I'm just going to take the end and I'm just going to peel it off, okay? But before I do that, I'm just actually gonna do the top one first because the top one is easier to deal with because you can sit it on this little fit, fitting here. I'm gonna make sure it's all completely covered all the way around. I've got my, I've had to patch it in the middle because I, I finished a roll and then started a new roll, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna peel that bit off there, okay? And then I'm just going to stop peeling off this bit here. So it comes off pretty easily once you do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do this piece first. I'm just going to sit it there for a second. All right, and then I'm going to peel off the next bit. Now, come back to me a sec, Chris. This bit that I'm going to show you next is a little bit scary because, you know, once you start rolling up your lampshade, you're like, ah! And, and if it slightly goes off in one direction and it's not following the tracks of the of the lampshade, um, you think, oh gosh, it's all gone horribly wrong. But it's actually not as bad as you think, because if you do go slightly in the wrong direction, you just wheel it back again. I'll show you what I mean in a second when I do it. But before we do that, folks, we just need one more bit of this double-sided tape at the edge, all right? So when you get to the edge and you've folded the edge, one bit, needs to attach to the other bit. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape down here, like so. And now I'm probably gonna just fiddle faddle trying to get the end off it because I didn't prepare that earlier and it's actually really difficult to do that. <laughs> la la la. Chat amongst yourselves whilst I try and get the edge of the sticky back tape to come off. Uh, it's probably not gonna do it now, is it? Sod's law. Any questions out there while I'm trying to do this, Christopher? Have you got any questions, Christopher? I, 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 um, yes. Go on um, then. Uh, what, what, question, we, um, what question have you got for I've me? Got a, I've got a question. Could you try and pattern match? I've done it. All right. Oh, it was a serious question. Oh, go on then. Could you try? Could you try and pattern match like you would with wallpaper? What do you mean? 
Is this your question? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, when you... What, the inside your... and the outside? Well, either side. Well, you're, you're just using one piece. Okay. Were All you paying right. attention? Hey, it was just a question that I was trying to come up with quickly. It was a to great cover question. Your, to cover your... <laughs> My inability to take the... inability to take the tape right, off. Right, I'm taking the tape off this side now. Okay, this is where it gets all a little bit sticky. Before you do this, also, you need to decide which way up your, you want your lampshade to go. So do you want it to be a pendant hanging from the ceiling? Or do you want it to be a table lamp going upwards? And that will determine which way you use these. So I want mine to be a pendant hanging from the ceiling, so I'm going to do them this way. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be placing them on here and rolling the whole thing up, just so you know in advance. Let me just finish God, peeling this, this off. this has got some great jeopardy to it, it hasn't has. it? This is proper it's, telly. <laughs> Will I, it work? I know that the company bum, bum, that bum. manufactured this kit don't do a live one of these. Theirs is nicely edited for mistakes. All right, so we can do it live. We like a bit of Jeopardy, don't we? Oh, absolutely. It's what keeps us going, isn't it, yeah. Christopher? <laughs> uh, like, like having to build a new TV studio in less than two weeks. Right, okay. So, so what? <laughs> and like having to completely move everything and redecorate anything, everything by next weekend. Right, so okay. Do you want me to be showing this from above? Yeah, well, I, want, I, know I kind of wanted to just start like this, actually, and show you it straight head on, because I want you to see like what I'm actually doing, standing at the table kind of thing. All right, so I've placed them right at the beginning, all right? Uh, they are horribly sticky, but obviously just hold on to them as little as you can. Or actually, you can just hold on to the middle of this one, and then you've obviously got to hold on to this one. Make sure they're both starting at the same point and you're at the same point, and then you start to roll forwards. Now, my top tip here is go really, really slowly. Don't try and do this really fast. I don't know why anyone... We haven't got time for that. Well, I don't know why anyone quickly. would do it really, really fast. Well, I don't mean, like, go ridiculously slowly, but just take your time is what I mean. All right, so actually, do you know what? Go to the overhead now just so people can see what I'm doing uh, a little bit closer. And then I'm just going to bring it back. And then I'm just going to... Now, once you've done a, a little bit of it, actually it gets, gets a lot lot easier because you can start to hold it from here and here and actually grab the outside of it rather than just holding the sticky bits but can you see i'm just following the line now in a minute it's going to cover this up when the fabric goes past a certain point so i just want to make sure you can see what i'm doing on the overhead shot um any questions about this no everyone happy Everybody's Every delirious. Are they? So now it gets a little bit tricky for me because I can't really see what I'm doing. And nor can we. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> this is what I do. Okay, well, this is, this is what you should do. Turn it round. And now if you go to the overhead, you will be able to see a little <gasps> bit. Yes. And then I'm just going to bring it towards me. Okay. And now you won't be able to see. So you can go back to the, the wide shot. All right. So... That is pretty much it. What I do want to show you, though, is that I've been really, really stupid and I've put the inside sticky strip on the wrong end. <laughs> so I should oh. have my stri sticky strip here. You just can't get the staff, can you? They don't know what they're doing. Right, so no, no problem. No problem, people. All we'll do is we'll just pop another bit on here now. And then you can sing a lovely song while I find the end of it again, Christopher. One brown No, one not that song. song. <laughs> what song would you like him to sing, people? Silence. Oh, they're all saying shut up, Chris. <laughs> Don't sing anything. That's what there's, there's flooding in. There's hundreds of messages. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I think they're saying. Okay, all right. All right, so I'm just going to try and remove the backing strip from this one. I mean, out of all the Jeopardy type things that could have happened there with things going wrong, actually, this wasn't a big deal. So it's not such a big deal. We just can't get the end of it off. That's all. Anyway, well, I might, I might you just. You can do it. You can do it. Shall I just you can continue? Do it. I know. I think I you need like to I do it. I feel like I can do it. Actually, you can do oh, it. maybe that's it. You can do it. All right, just bear with me, folks. I know this makes thrilling viewing. There we go. Done it. Uh, oh my lordy, sticky back, sticky back tape live on the telly. All right, so yeah, you put your strip, 
sticky stuff on the end you're going to, not the, end, not the other end. Okay, and then as I'm coming round here now, there it is, I'm going to press it down. I've already got a lovely strip of sticky stuff on the inside as well to attach some ribbon. Yeah, yeah, think your head there, you know, that's fine. All right, so now I need to just press that down and you can see there's the beginnings of my lampshade, okay? That's All right. amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? So the next thing that you have to do is going to be really difficult to show you, but I'm going to try. Okay, so if we go back to the overhead here now, can I you see inside? You're going to be able no, to okay, so I'm going to tip before. it up like this. All right. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be just turning this edge in like this and all the way around, okay? And then where there's a strut, we're going to be cutting either side of the strut like that and then carrying on, okay? So I'm just going to do a bit of it and show you as I go. And obviously you've got the sticky back tape going all the way round on here so it should adhere quite nicely to it. So here's another strut. So I'm just going to get my scissors, get in there. Ooh, I can't see and just cut it, snip, snip. Mind your fingers. Mind your fingers with the very sharp scissors. <laughs> and then I'll just quickly go around to the next strut. But I think it's gonna look really great actually. And I'm quite pleased as to where the animals have ended up on the design. So that's good, it's kind of worked. All right, so I'm going to go around here and then obviously you're going to end up with an overlappy bit here. So the best thing to do here is to actually cut out this rectangle. I'm doing this very cat handedly, sort of not how I would normally go about it, but I'll do my best. There we go. OK, so we're cutting out that rectangle there and we're just continuing round with all of that. Now, now I'm going to show you how to use this tool. All right. So this tool then goes in with its pointy bit. Let me come in this way. There we go. Can you see that? Just about. And then we start to just push it under the sticky ring. Like Ooh. that. Isn't that Instead clever? Your, your sticky ring seems to be doing the trick. <laughs> <laughs> My sticky ring is working very, very well. So that's a relief. Okay, and then I obviously would continue all the way around here. And what you can do is if you're fin this finishing tool, this plastic -y thing, sometimes the end of it goes a bit cockeyed. Uh, so you can just trim off. I find this easier actually. If you trim off the edge of it with a straight line, it's actually much better at pushing the velvet in. I hope everyone can see what I'm doing. And I feel like I'm in a really weird position to be doing it, but hopefully you can see. Um, has anyone got any questions while I just quickly nip around um, this edge? Catherine Keeling on Facebook. Oh, hello, Catherine. Yes. Uh, is asking how much the kit costs. So that is a very fine question. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's sixteen ninety-five, Catherine. Just bear with me two little milliseconds, and I will confirm that for you right here right now it is 16.95 i was right yes 16.95 so presumably that's that so and then you need to buy the material you need as well. to buy your fabric separately okay so all of the fabrics are on uh, in fact if you go to the lampshade kit the lampshade kit is under new on our website um and if you go to that kit it does have some links to the velvet um the fabrics are all under our fabric se section under needlework, okay? Um, so you need to get your fabric separately. And they need to be two pieces that are at least one metre wide by, I'd say, probably about sort of between 25 and 30 centimetres deep. And that just gives you enough play to sort of allow you to position them, cut them, and for it not to be too tight. So, like I say, you could use two pieces of cotton or you could use a piece of velvet and a piece of cotton like I've used. Um, and just remember that if they are directional and they've got a pattern on that needs to go a certain way up, which a lot of, pattern, uh, a lot of fabrics do, then just bear that in mind. But obviously, if you're using something like these that we also sell that are just um, polka dots, 
then it doesn't matter if you're doing something like that. And again, it probably doesn't matter with some of these just that are floral quite so much as well, like these. But yeah. I'll see that on Instagram terribly. Oh, well, sorry. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Carry on Those. as you were. There's and another these. question in. Yes, go um, on. From Yarn and Thistle. Does yeah. the kit come with double sided tape? Yes, yes. So yes. you get a whole roll of it like this. Okay, you get a whole roll of this tape. You get the finishing tool. Okay. Oh, that's me. Sorry. That's you. you get the whole roll of tape like this. You get the finishing tool like this. You get the strip, the repositional, which I've just chucked over my shoulder, I think, when I was using it, the strip to help you determine how, to, how much to cut off. And obviously you get the panel and you get the top ring and you get the bottom ring. Okay. So everything you need is included apart from the fabric. Um, and just a sharp pair of scissors, really. Um, and, and then, yeah. And if you do want to just use some trimmings afterwards, I'm just going to talk to you about trimmings in just a second. Let me just finish this one edge, and then I feel like I can at least show you what it looks like when it's done and how quick it is, because it's quite quick, isn't it? Really? It doesn't take, I mean, you know, half an hour if you've made yourself a lovely lampshade. Obviously, I've still got to finish the bottom. But now let's just move across to the one that I prepared earlier. <laughs> Stop yeah. saying that. Okay. <laughs> so this is the finished one. As you can see, I have added some trimming on the bottom. And I was thinking, I was, you know, all sorts of fringings would work on the bottom of this. Or a giant rick rack, or a beaded trimming, or a tassel sorry, trimming. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A or, giant what? Rick rack. Don't worry, darling. It's like, you know, the stuff that goes like this. Rick rack. You do know what I mean. Giant rick rack. Or pom pom trimmings. Anything, really. You could put anything on the bottom. Buttons. Uh, and then what I've done here, if you just go to the overhead a second, just show them this seam. So I've, I've glued on a piece of ribbon here on this um, outside where it meets here. And then on the inside, I don't know if you can see on the inside, but I've done the same thing down the inside as well. So that's, um, and that's worked really well with these deer actually and the poppies, just where I, I positioned it on this one. But I think actually on the one I've just done, it's worked pretty well as well, because I've got all the birds. Look, I've got the parrots, and then I've just about got the cockatoo here as well, which is what I wanted. So that's why I positioned it the way I did. Actually, I can just fold this in now and it will just give me a nice neat edge. And I've got that birdie on there as well. So that's worked pretty well. So I just think it's so, so nice having the two fabrics, having one inside as well. So like when, if you have it hanging down from the ceiling, and then you looking up, you can see the inside fabric as well. Just think it looks so pretty. And likewise, if you've got it as a table lamp and you, you're walking past and you can look down, and then obviously when it's lit up, it's going to light up the middle of the the middle of it. So yes, yeah, so trimmings and ribbons down the seams. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. All right, so once you've got all of the uh, velvet tucked neatly in. You can just do a little bit of glue if you want to around where you've cut by the struts and make sure that's nice and neat and tidy. And then where it's overlapped with the two fabrics at the top, just make sure that's nice, nice and neat at the top as well. Um, and that, that's pretty much it. And then put it on the lamp and turn the light on. Okay. So um, any more questions on that? Um, but horribly straightforward, really. I... Half an hour. Mm. That's half an hour of me doing it live on the telly, like oh. messing about, but really quick and easy. Really Ellie, quick and easy. Ellie May asks, does Ellie that May, price sorry. include the velvet? But we know no, it doesn't. No, sorry, it doesn't. Attention, it's just Ellie. the kit. <laughs> it's just the kit, Ellie, sorry. So um, uh, you need to add the velvet or the cotton or whatever you'd like. I mean, the velvets are absolutely beautiful. I keep putting this this way up because I don't want to squash the the fringing on the bottom. Uh, here are some of the velvets that we do. We do them in half metre pieces. So you don't need to buy a whole metre of it. So it makes it slightly less expensive. But also we do have lots of cottons as well. This is rather a nice one, gold spotted one. Lots of spots. Um, Quite crazy nice. Janet three. Those go well together. Can you show us crazy the lampshade lit up? No. Um, not now. <laughs> Not now. We have got the technology, but it's not that great. 
<laughs> oh, that just would have tipped me over the edge. I'm yeah. so sorry. No. But, you know, what actually, you know, what I was actually planning on doing was taking this home, hanging it in my lounge and doing a photo shoot. But because we've been decorating the new premises um, and it's been mental, it's been crazy, um, I haven't had a chance. I'm so, 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 so sorry. Although I'm now just looking, there's a little lamp sitting there on the floor and I'm just thinking, could we quickly do that? Probably not. Chris is looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay, all right, I'll just put everything down, keep talking. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, actually, if we put the light on, um, I don't even know if this lamp works, actually. This is like proper, proper live TV, this is. I mean, who else does this kind of ridiculous situation? Because we've got some plug sockets just there, so it's just a question, oh, he's plugging it in. It's just a question of, oh, and it works. Let me just show you the woven lampshade on there. Hand it over, Christoph. So this is one of my lampshades. Thanks, darling. This is one of my lampshades from my book, Easy Stuff to Make with Fluff. And then if you just bear with me, two secondos, can I unscrew the, the ring? This is the question. Can I unscrew the ring? I was going to do that. For yeah, go on then. I, I was going to do, do that for you, but you, sorry, you, you, sorry. you took it away. Sorry, sorry. But what I was going to go on and say was that um, you're not going to get the light coming through the lampshade. Okay, it's that not was a question that yeah. carries up. Had, no, but that's dependent on no. the material so you it's use. Quite, I well, yeah, no, it's not because no? the panel oh, is the quite a thick, oh. uh, thick plastic. All right, this oh. panel. Like, if you look through it now, I could, actually, if I look through it now, if you put a, a white cotton on either side of it, then yes, you might get a bit of light coming through it. Because I can see the word stick it coming through from one side to the other. So it's a sort of um, an opaque plastic um, panel, I would say. All right. So let me just put my low energy. No, you need to put the lamp No, I was, on all first. I was going to do was just going to do that, actually. Because mine's a pendant. So there oh. you go. So you can't see the light coming through it um, because my velvet's very um, thick. It's a bit Halloween-y look. Thick, that's the word, darling, thank you. I'm glad you're here to finish my sentences, if nothing else. Uh, it's very thick fabrics that I've used. So, yeah, if you used a really, really fine, sheer, muslin-y, linen-y thing, then you might get a bit of light coming through. Uh, you could punch holes in it, but that's a whole nother tutorial. <laughs> we won't even go there. This is this is a winter lampshade. This is, I think, velvets, darker colours, cosy nights by the fire, directional lighting. Look, I'm, I'm lighting up the ceiling quite nicely. So it's like mood lighting. These are accent lights in your room. Accent lights. And so then if it's pendant, it's just going to go straight down. Questions. Go on, I need to turn this off now, sorry. Yeah. I hope you're um, all impressed that we managed to do that, though. Uh, I'm impressed. Do you glue <laughs> the fringe on? Good question. That's what I thought. And yes, indeed. You don't think I'd be fool enough to, foolish enough to stand here with a, a needle and thread, do you? Uh, anyone that knows me well will know that I do enjoy a particular brand of glue. Which glue is that, Jill? I don't know. Can you not then remember the name of it, Christopher? Um, uh, uh, Tem Jack? Tem Tem no, it's not Tem Jack. It's Gem Tack. Gem Tack. Yeah. And where do you so buy that you from? You can buy Jill? it from our website, Christopher. Can you? We sell a lot of this glue. Okay. I hope you don't mind this nonsense. Uh, <laughs> that is brilliant for sticking fabric to fabric, metal to fabric, like brooch backs and stuff like that, felt to fabric. So yes, I used this. I simply blobbed it round. That's a technical expression. Blobbed it round the rim of my lampshade, and then I. Popped on my trimming. I overlapped it at the join. Where even was that? I'm guessing it was where this join is. I can't even see. I've done such a good job. And uh, there you have it. Another question from Ellie May. Yes, Ellie May. Would that work with crochet and cotton liner? I like inner, it. Inner, I sorry. like it. Well, hang on though. Crochet, as in you're attaching your crochet to that panel. Is that what we mean here? Or uh, my next without, question, using the, without losing the liner and just putting... My next uh, question is, uh, how thick's your crochet? What yarn did you use? Uh, if it's lacy crochet and you've used lace weight yarn, then yes. 
if you're using an Aran weight yarn for your crochet, then I'm thinking that'll be too thick to go under the rim of the epoxy coated lampshade ring. Oh, that was a long sentence. Um, so you, you would need to be careful what sort of crochet were you, you were using. I would also suggest that you put it onto a very sheer piece of calico stroke muslin stroke backing first, maybe, rather than otherwise you're going to see a shiny plastic through the holes in your crochet. So I think it's a great, great idea. Let's do it, but put it on some fabric first. Should we do it now? No, because oh, okay. I don't have any. Okay. Put it on some fabric first. That goes around here and then a different fabric inside. But I like that idea. Very nice. Um, and then you could even do a crocheted edging around the bottom as a trim, couldn't you? Just saying. Send in your photos of that when it's done. <laughs> Sounds lovely. <laughs> but, oh yeah, so just watch the, the thickness of your yarn and um, otherwise you're not going to be able to wrap it round. So the thickness of the velvet, and I've made these with felt as well, felt lampshades. Again, uh, that's just about, you need to make your felt quite thin in order for, to get it to wrap round and go underneath the rim of it, okay? Otherwise it won't work. Okay, any more for any more little questionies? Um, I'm just gonna finish this off actually. No, well, not really no. questions. Not really questions, just little funny com funnies. People, people, they know who they are. <laughs> They know who they are. Yeah. Um, so we're working really hard on our new premises. We're nearly there in lots of respects. We are hoping to move very soon. We've got a deadline. I'm not going to say what it is in case it doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, I, I, hope, I hope that our next tutorial, which I'm about to tell you about, will be in the new premises. Well, it will be. But if it's not there, I don't know where it'll be. Hang on, let me just get the next kit. Out the way, Betty. Out the way. All right, so our next, my, my next live tutorial is going to be for my new kit. And I've very stupidly left the samples at home, uh, at the other premises, I'm sorry. So I can only show you the actual kit. But basically, it's to make macrame rope rainbows. OK, this is very timely because it looks like we're all going about to go into lockdown again. So we can make some more rainbows. This makes either two key rings, OK, or a larger wall hanging with four arcs instead of three. You get 10 little balls of uh, these sort of vintage pastel-y coloured yarns in the packet. So that's great. So you have loads and loads of yarn. You get a whole pack of yarn darn and needles. You get the craft wire, you get chunky macrame rope, you get instructions. And then I'm going to do this live tutorial on Sunday, October the 11th in my new studio. There I said it. You I hope. It. We hope. No, you hope. <laughs> Why, what do you mean? Are you not hoping? I, I have no real um, opinion. No real... Opinion. <laughs> so that's what's happening for the next one. I do hope you'll join me with that. It's 1995, this kit, if you wanted to get one and join in. Um, and then you'll have loads of the yarn left over and we're, we, we'll be selling... The, the rope separately as well if you wanted to make more with the yarn you've got left over from your kit. Oh, the other thing it comes with are these two really, really cute heart-shaped um, little hanging things for key rings, fobs they're called, and you could also use that for hanging the wall hanging as well. They're really nice, they're silver heart-shaped ones here. So that's what's coming next and I hope you all have a lovely week that isn't too stressful and is full of crafting goodness. And I will see you very soon. If you want to keep a, abreast of what's going on with our new premises and moving, do join me on Instagram or Facebook where I'm doing frequent updates and lots of little videos and showing you all my decorating and so on and so forth. And it's saved on Instagram highlights as well. All right, we'll see you next time though. And thank you for joining, ju tuning in. I can't speak. Bye. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. Propertorium. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. Propertorium. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. It's chilly and glad rides. Propertorium.
It's chilly and glad.